a program for all America. Brought to you by New Green Comet Cleanser, the only cleanser fortified with Clarinol. Comet bleaches out stains, wipes out germs as no other leading cleanser can. Get New Comet. And Crest Toothpaste with Floristan. And now here he is, Mr. This Is Your Life himself, Ralph Edwards. Hello, everybody. I'm speaking to you from the inner lobby of the new NBC office building next door to their television studios here in Burbank, California. There's the telephone that might be our principal subject. Mr. John Nelson, NBC program executive, has asked our principal subject to come to his office on the third floor for a little business talk. Well, their business completed. They're about to come down this elevator here right now. Uh, when the door slides open, you'll see a face as haunting as the face of Abraham Lincoln. And what memories will come to many of you when you see him? Memories of little movie theaters and silent picture days over a bag of peanuts or popcorn. We yelled with laughter at the antics of this sad-faced little man. He seemed to get into trouble every time he turned. I see the elevator has started down, so stand by for a great surprise. Oh, my. We uh, called Mr. Nelson just a second ago to say uh, that we had a little trouble on stage. That is our confederate. Uh, actually, Axel Gruenberg, our producer, called Mr. Nelson said, Would you please come down on stage? So, uh, Mr. Nelson is bringing our subject. And, uh, <clears throat> fine. Hello, Buster Keaton. How do you do? Uh, come on out here, Buster. Nice to see you. I'm a fan of yours from way back. And the fact is, come on out here, boys. Uh, Buster, uh, <laughs> he smells around. John Nelson, come over here, Johnny. John Nelson and I have kind of framed you. You see, you're on television, coast to coast. America's waiting for the story of what... <laughs> story of one of the immortals of the silent screen. You, Buster Keaton, for tonight, this is your life. <laughs> Where's uh, Al Gregory? Al Gregory of Paramount Pictures, who was in on the plot. Thanks to you. Johnny Nelson, thanks very much, John. And Howard Ross over there, thanks so much. Look, uh, Buster, you've been caught... Uh, <laughs> you've played a lot of practical jokes on people. You've been caught in one yourself now uh, that you didn't create. Okay, boy? Now, a message about wonderful new Comet Cleanser. Folks moving out. I'm superintendent of this apartment building. Got to get things cleaned up. Lots easier to rent when everything looks good. Uh-oh. Look at that mess. Folks can sure get their sinks looking bad. Old cleansers like this can't clean that up, I know. I've used them all on this job and on the world's worst sinks. That's why I use Comet now. Watch. None of those other cleansers have chlorinol. It's Comet's bleaching agent, and boy, it really works. There. Doesn't Comet clean like crazy? It sure does. Comet gets sinks and tubs whiter and cleaner than any other cleanser can. In fact, so clean, they're up to 99% free of household germs. So get Comet fortified with chlorinol. It bleaches out stains, wipes out germs as no other leading cleanser can. Are they here? They're not here yet. Well, stay with us, ladies and gentlemen, because you're going to see highlights in the life of a great personality who was loved not only by millions of people all over the world in the movies he made, but by the friends who worked with him in the industry. And here they are now, ladies and gentlemen, our host, Ralph Edwards, our honored subject master comedian, Buster Keaton. Oh, thanks so much. Well, did we get you or did we get you, man? We got you. <laughs> Buster, for a younger generation who uh, didn't see your films, we're going to decorate your life with bits and pieces from your movies, which have never been beaten for a deep down, satisfying laughter. Come over here and sit in our chair of honor, will you? This is your life, Buster Keaton. <laughs> Your father teaches you early in life that 
that a sure way to get a laugh is to sock somebody in the in the head with something. Your dad and mother, Joe and Myra Keaton, are gone now, of course, but they were both busy. They're on the road in Kansas when you're born. What kind of a show were they in at that time, Buster? The medicine show. Right. The old-time medicine show. And you idolize your father who teaches you to fall and roll like a bouncing ball. At the age of four, you proudly join mother and dad in their act. I got my it first salary. the roughest act in vaudeville. <laughs> the first time I ever saw Joe Keaton throw Buster all around the stage like that, I was scared to death. I thought he killed the child. Well, that's the voice of a lifelong friend from your vaudeville days. Later, she became a leading lady to such great stars as Rudolph Valentino, Will Rogers. From Glendale, California, here is motion picture actress Louise Dresser. <laughs> What part did Buster play in the act of the three Keatons, Louise Dresser? <laughs> well, he played the part of a very bad little boy. Now, don't you cry. You had me cry. <laughs> it's a thrill to see these two wonderful people here together. My goodness, Louise Dresser, what memories? You know, one trick that Buster had that I remember very well. Mm -hmm. He used to stand on a table back of his father, whirling around a, a basketball on the end of a rope while Joe was trying to shave himself with a straight-edged razor. <laughs> the ball kept getting closer and closer and closer. <laughs> All of a sudden, bang. Boy. <laughs> right on Pop's head. Right on his head. And the audience would die laughing, of course. What would your father uh, do to you then, Buster, in the act? Wouldn't he... Well, if he caught me, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> he, he kicked you, he threw you off stage. Most people seeing your act uh, no, this is all for laughs, but now and then someone takes your falls and beating seriously. And here to tell us what happened is a friend you haven't seen in over 20 years. From Muskegon, Michigan, where your family lived during summer vacations, is old-time vaudevillian Will Rawls. Here's Will. been a little while since you've seen this fella, hasn't it there? I guess uh, Buster was almost too good at those uh, falls and pantomime injuries. Is that so, Mr. Rawls? Yes, he was quite often, uh, the parents were quite often arrested, thinking that they were mistreating him. Okay. And then Buster would have to go down to the chief of police, pull off his little shirt and pants, and show them that he had no bruises or broken legs. <laughs> Years later, you see Buster attain his first boyhood dream. And what was that, Mr. Rawls? When his father and us helped put him through the Elks, Muskegon. Now, both you and Buster are lifetime members, aren't you, of the yes. members of the Elks Club of Muskegon. And what else do you remember of Buster's boyhood days, Louise Dresser? Oh, I remember so many things about him, nice things. But the nicest thing that I remember about Buster was his great devotion to his mother and his love for his little brother and sister. Brother and sister, and here Whenever they are. Whenever you ever saw this boy, those two children were always with him. From Los Angeles, your sister Louise and your brother Harry Keaton. Here they are. Of course she helped frame you. The whole family was in. You're not safe at all anymore, Buster, with these fellas. What happens when Buster is about 19, Louise? Well, our parents had to give up the vaudeville act, and he set out to support us all. Yes. Yeah, he was determined that Louise and I would get the schooling that he never had. Well, thank you, Louise and Harry Keaton, Louise Dresser, and Mr. Will Rawls of Muskegon, Michigan. You'll see Buster a little later. You'll see him later, Buster. the makeup man. <laughs> He's not dressed. <laughs> it was Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle who first offers you a part in his screen comedies. You feel right at home because you got hit with something the uh, first scene you played, didn't you, Buster? Yep. What was it with? Uh, with Fatty. Wasn't it a sack of flour? Yeah, a sack of flour. About three pounds and tied off tight so there was no air in the, in the yeah. package. Real rock. And... Uh, <clears throat> I said, how am I going to keep, uh, keep from flinching? He says, look away from me. When I say turn, it'll be there. 
And it was, and you did a... It, he put my head where my feet were. <laughs> You show such great talent that after your return, of course, you couldn't help but show talent on a hit like that, but after your return from fighting in France in 1918, you're offered a chance to star in your own comedy. No movie actor ever had a faster rise to stardom than Buster. In less than two years, he was famous all over the world. A voice to awaken memories, Buster. He was the director of many of your earliest comedies. Now an executive with Spike Jones staff. Here's your old friend, Mr. Eddie Klein. <laughs> Why? As a young man, you Why worked you for... <laughs> right here, oh. rehearsing. You worked for... <laughs> Mike Jones? Yeah. Spike was last night in a good show, too. Yeah. A wonderful start. Yeah. Yeah. As a young man, you worked for Buster Keaton, Eddie, a comedy genius. This man, Keaton. Uh, did he keep you and the crew laughing all the time? Well, we always had a wonderful time because this guy was always pulling jokes on us. Mrs. Uh, Daryl Zanuck was his uh, leading lady at the time. What was her name then? Uh, Virginia Fox. Yeah. You remember? There was a scene in one of the movies where she was supposed to fall and catch by her clothes on a moose head. Yeah. This guy says, put her up there and leave her there. We put her up. Then he yelled, lunch. <laughs> <laughs> It's worth your life to work for this fellow. Oh, yeah. Mrs. Zanuck was going to be a part of your life tonight, Buster, but at the last second, she uh, got a severe case of bronchitis and could not be here. She's watching and sends her love, of course. Oh, she's a good sport, though. Say, you remember the time she saw the smoke coming outside her dressing room window? You remember? And she yelled, fire. And she tried to get out the door, and it was locked. She went to the phone. No answer. Then you rescued her. Before she really fainted, then she found out about you lighting those smoke pots out there. <laughs> when, le <Ow. laughs> when leading ladies uh, left your studio, Buster, they could face anything in the world, I think. Thank you for bringing us those memories, Mr. Eddie Klein. And the king, <laughs> With a sure instinct for laughs, you create most of your own great comedy situations. And how we loved it when you got into one mess after another. Now here, we see Keaton against a cyclone in Steamboat Bill Jr. Now the cyclone uh, blew the hospital away, and there goes Buster in his bed. Oh man, what a storm. Look out, Buster. Buildings have to fall on you there if you're not careful. Just missed it. Uh, the wind has really taken hold. Oh, it's really got you there. Keep fighting, boy. You'll make it. Don't give up. Don't give up, Buster. You'll do it. Uh, well, hilarious comedies like that one make you rich. And meanwhile, you marry Natalie Talmage. And you have two sons. You own a mansion, your own movie studio, a yacht, everything. For a fellow with a lot to lose, Buster took terrible risks. In the most dangerous scenes, he would never, never use a double. Well, that's the voice of one of your directors. In the 1920s, he went on to become one of the best-known and best-loved character actors of all time, one of Hollywood's leading citizens, ladies and gentlemen. Here's Mr. Donald Crisp. I remember you distinctly. I remember you distinctly. I remember you distinctly. I remember you distinctly. <laughs> we were afraid what this fellow might do is, Buster, you know. We're all kind of standing by. Buster uh, gave you chills many times, eh, Mr. Chris? Mr. Edwards, I still gasp when I think of one scene that Buster did. He had the entire front of an apartment building. It was three stories high. Yes. And he planned for the entire front of the building to fall over. And he planned that one little window at the top should fit over him, and he hoped that he was standing in the place where that was. And when that fell... The cameraman trained it. Oh, but well, here's that very scene. Now watch this and see how you'd like to have been in Buster's shoes that day. <laughs> how do you feel today seeing it, Buster? Would you do it again? Oh, no. No. <laughs> now here's another scene we'll never forget. Now this is you, Buster. If you remember, I directed a picture with you called The Navigator. This is you under the water. And that day, someone had neglected to put the piano wire on the top of your diver's helmet. And you had got, jumped over the side of an ocean liner in about 150 feet of water with only the telephone connection on your helmet. And if it hadn't been for that one small wire, 
We'd have lost one of the kindest men I ever knew in my life. <laughs> this man gave away his salary about every week. That's well, true, young man. Thank you, Donald Chris, for memories of days when Buster Keaton was the talk of Hollywood for his daredevil courage and his kind heart. Mr. Chris said uh, Hollywood would have lost one of its kindest, kindest gentlemen. Ahead of us, Buster Keaton, is a time when you nearly lose your famous sense of humor. Life smashes you to the ground. And how you pick up the pieces and go on, we'll find out in just a moment. You're ready for a little relaxation here, aren't you? Sit down. Sit back. Take it easy, Buster. First, let's turn our attention to this important message from Fess. Timber, timber. Now Big Paul hails from Morgan, where the trees reach up a mile. He's a lusty bull with an axial yo-ho, and look at that big tooth smile. Big Paul's a lucky fella, with healthy teeth he's blessed. He's learned to fight old tooth decay, with a toothpaste they call press. Big Paul's wise. You be wise too, cause chances are you've got soft spots in your teeth. And soft spots can turn to cavities, unless you turn to crest. Yes, Crest does something no other kind of toothpaste can do. Hardens those weak places, mops them from turning into cavities. That's because of Crest's own special fluoride, Fluoristan. And Crest freshens your breath, tastes wonderful. So make Crest your family toothpaste and put your fears to rest. Soft spots can turn to cavities unless you turn to Crest. Crest is best, Crest is best, Crest is best. Thank you, and back to This Is Your Life, Buster Keaton, great comedian of the golden age of comedy. And here's a scene, Buster, where you're a freshman being tossed in a blanket by your fellow students. There you go. Now watch the lady. <laughs> How are you to know she's getting dressed, you know? Look out, Buster. Yeah! Oh! The last scene ends in a funny fall here in the 1930s. Ranking in world acclaim with Chaplin and Harold Lloyd, it seems you can never fall. You even surmount the move to sound movies. But then comes a shock, the breakup of your marriage. With almost all your money gone, you spend a period when you just don't care. And what about your picture career, Buster? What happens to it and why? Well, it just came to a stop. For years, you kind of fight things within yourself, in a way. Conquering only when you realize that uh, maybe your athlete's body is at stake. By then, you, a former great star, wind up in an obscure job as an idea man for other people's pictures. Material things were gone, but Buster still had his real wealth. He had talent. He still had it. Nothing could hide it. Well, Fred. yeah, no trouble identifying that voice, is there, Buster? A good friend who, like yourself, has made the world laugh. Fred Shelton! <laughs> did Buster contribute ideas for your comedy pictures at MGM, Red? He most certainly did, but uh, Buster was so modest that I never knew that he was the one that was writing all these wonderful scenes and things that I was doing in the pictures. I remember one picture, Watch the Birdie, where uh, I was a cameraman. Yeah. And I, had, I, I want to get a newsreel shot, so I see this fire truck coming. <laughs> I run and jump on the fire truck. I slip and I fall and I almost kill myself. Thing going about 25 miles an hour. I hang on the side of it, holding my hat, and it pulls into the fire station. <laughs> well, what's so funny about it? I mean, not only was it funny on the screen, but Buster stands in the background and goes. <laughs> Did Buster give you any of his tricks of pantomime? Too? Yes, but he was very, very modest about this. He would always take me over to one side, and any time he had an idea. He would uh, say, I think this would be a funny thing to do. And then uh, I would go out and do it, but he always tried to make other people believe it was my idea. It was wonderful. really busted. Uh, his, uh, his dressing room was kind of a get-together for the whole gang, wasn't oh, he had all Didn't he make up gadgets. some funny gadgets? What were some of the gadgets he <laughs> Oh, had? he had a, a cigarette lighter, a goldfish bowl, revolving goldfish bowl for tired goldfish. Yeah. <laughs> Besides good comedy ideas, yes. did you gain anything else from the poker-faced kid yes, here? Yes, I most certainly did. I, I learned the greatness of a comedian. I learned that uh, Buster didn't care who got the laugh. He looked way beyond that. He looked to the people that needed laughter. 
needed one of the greatest cures like medicine is laughter. And I believe that you're the one of the greatest doctors of comedy. Believe me. One great comic. <laughs> giving credit to another great comedian here. Say, um, Red, did you, did you ever make the great stone face Keaton break down and laugh or not? Well, I, I think he'd uh, sit back and watch all the things that he did. Say, seen me do them. I told him my salary, I think he laughed at that. <laughs> God bless you. You'll see him a little later here. <laughs> Memories? Memories of many pretty girls in your comedies. But you don't think of marriage again for a long time. Still taking care of your uh, parents? Oops, there's a scene where the whole water came into the audience there. <laughs> you, <laughs> it was such scenes as that that paid the bills that gave you the money to take care of your pay, uh, uh, parents. But then later on, when things got rough, even on your small salary, here in the days where you're handing out ideas to the bigger studios and all, years later, you move in with your mom into the first little house that you'd bought for. And to your home comes a girl who has made friends with your family, a girl who is to remove any possible remainder of disappointment in your life. And here she is, Eleanor Norris, who became your devoted wife 16 years ago, Mrs. Keaton. Here's a pretty girl. <laughs> Come on, sit here, my uh, buster. <laughs> what have these... I need my time. I know. <laughs> Fix it up right. there, Mommy. What have these years of marriage <laughs> to buster men, Eleanor? Well, we've been very happy. Of course, we've had some lean times, too, but... Buster's been so happy he's wanted to go back to work, and I've been very proud of the way he's come back into prominence. You bet. And America's happy to have him back. You developed an act so that Elner could appear with you, didn't you, Buster? Did you rehearse this? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, where have we sit around and talk what we're going to say, you know. Sometimes it comes out a little different, like when you get Skelton out here or someone, you know. As a matter of fact, when Red uh, came on, he scared me to death. He says, it's all just before I went out to surprise you. He says, don't worry. We're going to have the whole gang out there singing for he's a jolly good fellow. <laughs> uh, where have you and your wife appeared with your act, Buster? With uh, you and Elner? In Europe. Mostly in Europe, you bet. Uh, and you uh, become a very popular guest star on television here in America again? I've done a few of those. You yes. sure have. And great. But in 1955, bad luck strikes again. What happens then, Miss Keaton? Well, he some broke some blood vessels in his neck, and for about five days, they didn't give much chance of saving his life. Yes, the plot of your life moves toward another dramatic moment. Many times in Buster's films, the hero was saved at the last minute. And by golly, if the very same thing didn't happen in real life for Buster. Well, you recognize that boy, Buster? One of television and motion pictures most versatile and popular stars. Here's your good friend, Donald O'Connor. Get up there together. Let's see. <laughs> what will... What was this uh, dramatic? I'll tell you why it's messed up like this in a moment if you don't know. If you, and if, what, what was this? What? And go, oh! Well, there goes our time. You know, we're good for about two hours. Skelton, you stay back there. What was this dramatic event uh, when Buster was so very ill, Donald? Well, Paramount was considering uh, uh, doing Buster's life story. Yes. And at this time, he needed a boost and everything. And he was in the hospital, and uh, Paramount called Mrs. Keaton. And then Buster found out about this, and when they, he also found out how much money they were going to give him. Well, he got well in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Donald O'Connor, are playing Buster Keaton in Paramount's uh, great picture, soon to be seen, the Buster Keaton story. And I know all America is going to see the Buster Keaton story when it comes out. <laughs> what about this story, Donald? Well, Buster, all I can say is, and sincerely and from the bottom of my heart, it was a great thrill for me to play your life story. I'm very happy that, that you consented because you've made me a very proud person, particularly just to know you. Thank you. Thank you, Donald O'Connor. Thank you. Well, completing this reunion of those nearest to you, here are your two sons. From Reno, Nevada, your son Bob from Los Angeles, Jim. Here's Bob. <laughs> And here's Jim. Bob, you're a builder in Reno. Uh, what do you say about this dad of yours? Oh, he's always been a great guy to us, Ralph. 
Wonderful. <laughs> Jim, you're in the publicity division of 20th Century Fox. Uh, what did your father do with the, uh, the loot he got from his life story? Oh, he bought a home and some land in the valley. He's raising some chickens and vegetables, Ralph, and he's as happy as he can be. Right? Right. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Jim. The little man who never smiled has found a lot to smile about. Millions of people around the globe to whom you gave the blessing, the fun, and the relaxation of happy laughter, join me in saying thank you. This is your life. Gifted comedian, Buster Keith. Now a moment, we'll look ahead and review the future, Buster. 60 seconds on one of our favorite subjects, Ivory Soap. The princess was showered with gifts, silks, jewels, ivory, ivory soap in the personal size. She loved it best, so beautiful, so pure and white, so handy in the bath, it floats. And it gave her suds in a twinkling, faster than any other leading bath soap. Can't keep a princess waiting. No milder suds ever pampered the royal skin. For your bath, use personal size ivory. You'll feel pampered as a princess. And you can afford that royal feeling. Four cakes of personal size ivory cost about the same as three cakes of any other leading bath soap. So that fourth cake is almost like a gift. Look for the ribbon on the wrapper. Personal size ivory. Your best bath buy. Well, your future starts tonight, Buster Keaton, and the scene will be a gala party in your honor at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, where your out-of-town friends have been staying. Red Skelton, you have your own room, don't yeah. you, Red? Yeah. <laughs> You'll have a 16-millimeter film of <clears throat> tonight's program. I need one. <clears throat> I mean the room. And this 16-millimeter Bell & Howell projector in a Bell & Howell movie camera. For Mrs. Keaton, Eleanor Kress has asked Marshall Jewelers New York to design this gold charm bracelet. With each charm holding a memory, you both share. Marshall also has designed cufflinks and this money clip for you, Buster. We know your loyalty and affection for the Elks of Muskegon, Michigan, Buster, where you're a lifetime member. So for the Elks Lodge there and your buddies who love you, remember you, Crest will deliver this magnificent Magnavox color television set, a masterpiece of beauty, performance, and design because it's a Magnavox. The Buster Keaton comedies made valuable contributions to the forward march of the motion picture industry. So on Lillian Way in Hollywood, at the exact site of the old Buster Keaton Studios, Crest will have installed a bronze medallion to mark that spot for all time to come in your honor. And today, Buster, you're still active in movies and television, but the happiest hours are spent raising chickens and vegetables on your small piece of land there, San Fernando Valley. Now, I hear you've been longing for a small tractor to take some of the backache out of the hoeing and cultivating. Is that right? Well, Crest is putting you in the uh, driver's seat of a wheel horse right away, the fun workyard tractor that will let you breathe through your work in the, the uh, garden there. We know you'll have a whale of a time with this little beauty and the attachments if you wanted the cultivator, the plow, and the rotary mower. Well, this is your life, Buster Keaton. You gave the world the sunshine of laughter. Better still, through good luck and bad luck, you were able to laugh at yourself and at the comedy of life. Keep on making us laugh, Buster, and God bless you. Thank you. Our guests were flown here by GWA Trans World Airlines. We now fly the newest and most luxurious airplane in the skies. Fly the finest. Fly GWA Jet Service. Next week, we bring you again that moving story of a young minister who went to war. Colonel Dean Hess. I'm sure you'll all want to see those wonderful Korean war horses again. So we'll see you next week. This is your life is presented by Proctor.